scrapbook. Move the courthouse. Hello there. We're going back into county history tonight to recall some of the hottest days in the history of what we now call Grays Harbor. They were the days of torrid political campaigns, rabid sectionalism, and hometown partisanship that would hardly be understandable if we didn't know Grays Harbor. It was during those days they almost split the county in two, that the western half tried to succeed from the eastern half, and that the county was in the stage of civil war, even families fighting among themselves over the issue of the day. And through it all, the harbor boomed and grew to become one of the most known spots on the Pacific coast. Tonight our story is going to be of the rebellion that swept over western Grays Harbor and resulted in an attempt to move the courthouse and the county seat. The election was one with what was called some smart politics and other terms, lies and misrepresentation. It was a time when the newspapers of Grays Harbor, Harbor levied their guns at each other and blasted with bold typeface when name calling and political press was a major part and a major sport when you could fill an opera house to overflowing by announcing a public indignation meeting to face a problem. Yes, they were great days, and after Dick has a few words from our sponsor, we'll tell you of the little civil war that threatened to split the county. It was September 21, 1905, that Grace Harbor saw the first evidence of what was later to become a major personal and political conflict for its residents and was the turn and was to turn the county into two factions fighting for a cause. At that time the county was officially called Chehalis. The county seat was Montesano. Aberdeen was a city of twelve thousand people. Hope we am boasted another seven thousand. Cosmopolis was a town of one thousand five hundred and Montesano had about 1,800 souls, and its residents were described. Now, at this time, the county was using a rather ancient and dilapidated courthouse with an impoverished vault to shelter its valuable records, heated by several wood-burning stoves that let belch smoke up some irreversible flues. It was, the county commissioners thought, about time to equip Chehalis County with a new courthouse. Oh, nothing official. It was just the unofficial word that was dropped in Hoquiam by Commissioner George L. Davis in Aberdeen by M. R. Sherwood and, up, and in the up county points Charles W. Arland. It was passed off as just unofficial thinking. But it started thinking in another direction. By 1905, the population of Chehalis County had shifted down to the harbor area. While the county had gotten its start as a populated area with settlements in the vicinity of Oakville, Montesano, and the rich river valleys of the Satsapa Wanuchi, the coming of the lumbering and shipping era had suddenly industrialized the lower harbor, and it had far outsped the eastern end growth. So the courthouse that had been located in Montesano for about 20 years was quite a distance from the center of population. To appreciate its true distance, we must think of this county as one unconnected by roads and highways. There were no roads from Montesano to Aberdeen. The railroad had only recently come down as far as Hoquiam, and except for the Northern Pacific soot shooting engines, there was no other way to Montesano than by riverboat. So when the first talk about a new courthouse began to be bantered around, residents of the lower harbor began to examine their situation with an eye on improving it. 
On the 21st of September, 1905, the Hoquiam Washingtonian put out a call to the Aberdeen Chamber of Commerce and the Hoquiam Business Men's Club to meet for the purpose of outlining a campaign to move the county seat to a point halfway between the two harbor cities. It was stated as clearly as that. Just a call for a meeting to talk it over. And while the citizens of Aberdeen and Hoquiam seldom sat down at a common table to talk things over quietly, at least to arrive at this agreement this time, they did take quite a reasonable view of the matter. Of course, there was Myrtle Street. The first problem to overcome was to decide which side of Myrtle Street the county building would be located on. But that was taken care of by Harry C. Hermans, who headed the East Hoquiam Company and was able to hand the committee a warranted deed for four acres of land on Simpson Avenue and Myrtle Street, about as near to the line as anyone could come. It would put the new courthouse in Hoquiam, but actually adjoining Aberdeen, and make the whole county system equally accessible to both cities. The businessmen of the two towns were much impressed with the arrangement, and for the first time since George Emerson plotted the town called Hoquim and Sam Ben filed the plat for one called Aberdeen, the town seemed to be in agreement on the matter. In fact, there were more in agreement. They were mutually supporting the project and increasing their enthusiasm. And from the professional men and businessmen who had been spending 25 cents, an exorbitant sum, they thought, for a trip to Montesano, the thought of being able to ride to the courthouse on a streetcar for just a echo was very appealing. <clears throat> and after some deliberation, as to their best approach to the problem, the citizens of Hoquiam and Aberdeen prepared a, a petition to the county commissioners to effect the change. And on January 4, 1906, they filed the long list, 1020 Aberdeen names and 936 Aberdeen names, Hoquiam names, compiled a long list, 1,020 Aberdeen names and 936 Hoquiam names, a total of 1,956 voters in all with the county commissioners. John Hogan, Aberdeen attorney, took the document to Montesano and presented it with a formal flourish. And the filing of the petition set off the first blast. Sides immediately began to form. The citizens of the east end of the county began to find reasons why the courthouse should not be moved. First they pointed out that the old courthouse was good enough. Why, they suddenly discovered it was good enough for another 20 years. It would be a crime to settle the county with a big debt when it had just gotten out of the red and was boasting of a $15,000 surplus when we had such a good courthouse. Then it was pointed out, after all, that the courthouse had been there for 20 years. Why not leave it? And finally, someone threw in the argument, how can you expect the people of the East County to go to Hoquim when there are no roads? And that was one that paid off for the citizens of Aberdeen and Hoquim, who had been trying to get the commission to build a highway since 1899, and who had been riding the railroad and the river to the courthouse in Montesano ever since. The East County folk also raised the cry, land speculators. The thought of the East Hopium Company giving land sounded like a promotion of some sort, and it made a strong part for their protest. Well, that was one side of the question. On the other side was the hue and cry from the lower harbor cities. First, the 80% of the population was now west of Montesano, and should be better served with a county seat located where it was most needed. Secondly, that the county needed some adequate protection for its records, and the old vaults were unsafe. Thirdly, the lower harbor was actually the geographic center of the harbor, although that was more easily proven without a map than with one. It's a promotion of the Grays Harbor Boomers,
shouted the East County voters. The selfish interest of a few are preventing us from achievement, roared back the lower Harborite faction. By this time, the newspapers representing the sections of the county had taken up hue and cried with the torrent enthusiasm. The Elma Chronicle, edited by Edgar Kibbe, and the Chehalis County Viaduct, published by J.E. McDougall, blasted away at the land promoters, and the Aberdeen Herald, with militant old John Carney, and Aberdeen Daily Bulletin, edited by H.D. Crawford, and the Grace Harbor Post, published by fiery editorialist J.W. Clark, and the Hoquiam Washingtonian, edited by J.D. Dean, leveled their guns and blasted back at the selfish interest who denied the needs of the majority. The affair moved on into the autumn of 1906, with the commissioners having set up the issue for a vote of the people in the fall election. And to back Hoquiam's promise of land and financial aid, Hermans put a deed for his four acres into the Hayes and Hayes Bank in Aberdeen in escrow as a pledge of faith. And uh, that was August 30th, 1906. On September 15th, citizens of Aberdeen met to hear Ed Ben, son of the city's founder, Ed Jones, J.B. Bridges, and E.C. Finch challenge the good faith of the upcountry folk and call for unity and support of the Lower Harbor citizens' fight. Funds were solicited and big voting getting big voting campaign got started. Five days later, the Citizens Committee of Hoquiam put ten thousand dollars into Hayes and Hayes Bank alongside the Herman's deed, and the issue was presented to the people. Well, if we told you that the county went to the polls and settled the issue in an American way, it would sound genteel, pacific, and the thing little to do. But they did. That is, they went to the polls and settled it. But with the most frightful hubbub the counties, in the county's history, as the day for voting came around, a committee of East County politicians spread the word that Aberdeen was using Hoquiam in the matter that Hoquiam had put up the land and the money, and that Aberdeen was really the one that would benefit. They spread the word, and Aberdeen and Hoquiam was one that was going to come out on the long end of things. Wasn't Hoquiam getting the courthouse while Aberdeen was the larger city? They spread another rumor, that while it had agreed to the courthouse would be located in between the cities, actually Hoquiam's Commissioner Davis and Montesano Commissioner Arland were already planning to move the courthouse site into Hoquiam proper. Their tactics were those of good generals at the beginning of the war. Alexander used them, so did Napoleon, divide and conquer, and so effectively did the cast as they put a spell of doubt among the lower harbor voters. And when the ballots were counted, the issue had fallen by a few hundred votes to carry. Cosmopolis, which had been left out of the controversy, voted to keep the courthouse where it was. Only five traitorous souls in Montesano, out of the more 500 voting, cast ballots that would move the county seat to Hoquiam. Alma opposed the move solidarily. And while Aberdeen and Hoquiam cast heavy votes for the move, enough voted against it to throw the balance to the east end of the county. When the votes had been counted, the Aberdeen Her Herald cried for a grand jury investigation of the election. Editor Kibbe of the Emma Chronicle was held into court on two libel suits, and the county was a successful split on two, as though it had been in a war. Oh, the tension didn't ease a bit. In fact, it got worse, and it developed into a fracas that was as close to an outright fighting as it could be. We'll tell you more about that in a minute. But first, but first, here's a word from Dick and our sponsors. Probably the whole affair would have blown over and been forgotten had not, Mo had not the Montesano boosters been formed. But on November 15th, just a few weeks after the election, they had voted not to build a new courthouse because the old one was good enough. Just a few weeks after that public squabble, 
that it had been thought settled, an organization called the Montesano Boosters converged on the county commissioner. They pointed out that the courthouse was antiquated, that it was dangerous, and that the records needed protection. They called for the immediate action to build a new county courthouse at a cost of $100,000. Well, that was a bombshell that set off a war. Having used the argument that the county shouldn't be saddled with debt and that the county didn't need a new courthouse, the same people now clamored for exactly what they had opposed. And the commissioners, with Sherwood dissenting, voted to hire an architect and go ahead with the plans. And as though he had been standing behind a bush waiting for his cue, the architect N.C. Gunnett stepped out into the stages with his partially developed sketches, and the Harbor City felt as if they had been victims of a deep, dark double plot. We've had enough of this double dealing, they shouted around Aberdeen and Oakland. The only answer is to split the county in two. We'll form our own county and call it Grace Harbor. But that's another story, and a great yarn for of itself. And we'll tell you that story tomorrow night when we again open our hometown scrapbook. Thank you for listening.